Chapter 1, New Company Setup. As part of this class, your students will learn how to set up a new company in QuickBooks. QuickBooks makes it easy by providing a simple step-by-step -step process to help. There are a few additional setup elements that are important to learn to help the students go even further in their company setup. In this chapter, you'll learn the following. First, how to create a new QuickBooks Online company. Customizing company settings. Import list information. Enable sales tax. And how to set up users in the new company. After students receive the welcome email from the Intuit Education team, they will follow the instructions to do the initial setup of their company file. After the initial setup of QuickBooks Online account, you'll need to complete some additional steps. Before getting started, it's a good idea to ensure that you have the Google Chrome web browser installed, as this is the recommended web browser when using QuickBooks. First, using your web browser, navigate to ca.qbo.intuit.com. It's a good idea to bookmark this page as this will be the daily sign-in for your students and for you as the instructor. Enter your email and or user ID and password. After entering the information, click Sign In. At this point, QuickBooks requires some additional information to complete the basic company setup. QuickBooks asks you to name your company. Answer the question, what's your business called? Next, tell QuickBooks how long you've been in business. After answering these two questions, click Next. Note that the checkbox labeled I've been using QuickBooks Desktop and want to bring in my data refers to converting data from the QuickBooks Desktop version to QuickBooks Online. Please note that this is not relevant for this class and your, client, your students should ensure that this checkbox is not selected. Next, QuickBooks asks you to choose the areas of, of the company file that you'll be using. Make the selections that apply to your company. Click All Set to complete the initial company setup. Now, QuickBooks displays the QuickBooks homepage or dashboard. After completing the initial setup of your QuickBooks company, there are several important tasks to complete. It's a good idea to enable and customize features and settings that apply to your company. The following settings are important to ensure that QuickBooks is set up the right way. It's recommended to edit the settings for each area of QuickBooks as you go through each chapter. This makes it easier to explain the context around customizing settings for the students. You will edit the settings as you learn new topics in this text. To access the settings, click the gear icon and then click Account and Settings. Use the categories on the left to navigate the various settings. There are several items that should be updated or enabled immediately after you set up your company. First, click Company to update information like the company name, company type, contact info, and address. Company name. The business name you enter here will be displayed on your dashboard in the top left corner of QuickBooks and in the gear icon at the top right at all times. QuickBooks uses your business name extensively in correspondence with your customers, including it in the subject line of emailed invoices on statements at the top of reports and much more. Your business name is also the default name of your business for payroll tax forms if you use payroll in QuickBooks. Click the Company Name section to expand and edit the information. You can also add a logo in this section. Click the plus symbol to add a logo. As part of the content available on the QuickBooks Education website, a logo is provided for the students. Note, the logo must be a JPEG, GIF, BMP, or PNG format and must not be larger than 1 megabyte in size. Logos display on sales forms when they are sent to customers. 
If you don't have a logo during the company setup process, you can easily add it later when customizing your forms. Edit the company name if necessary. Click Legal Name to add a legal name if it's different than the company name. You can also add the business number in this section. This is important in a real business situation as this is the number that will display on company forms when making sales on invoices and sales receipts. After completing this information, click Save. Click Company Type to update the company type. You can choose from a variety of company structures in the Tax Form section. This is not applicable in this class, so don't worry about entering it. However, it's important when your students get out into the real world and start setting up their own companies in QuickBooks. Next, you can enter the industry. Once again, this is optional and not important in the education setting. Click to save. Next, click contact info to update the company email, the customer facing email, company phone, and website. After editing the information, if necessary, click to save as well. Click the address section to edit the company address, customer facing address, and legal address. The legal address is used for filing taxes. If left blank, the company address is used. After entering the information, click to save. Next, click the Advanced tab on the left side of the window. Then click Accounting. There are several features to enable in this section. The first month of the fiscal year. For reporting, you can specify any month as the start of your fiscal year, also called your financial reporting year or accounting year. The students must make this selection before getting started. QuickBooks will report on this date. First month of the income tax year. This does not apply in this class. Otherwise, your students can talk to their accounting professional about this option. Accounting method. This defaults to accrual, but if required, it can be edited. For the purposes of this class, always keep it at the accrual. Close the books. The closing date marks when your company's books have been closed. You'll set a closing date password to protect your records against changes that would alter balances for closed accounting periods. These changes include editing or deleting transactions entered on or before the closing date and entering new transactions dated on or before the closing date. It's a good idea to use this setting when working with student files. This will prevent them from making errors in their own company files. It's recommended that you choose the option that includes both warning and a password. If you decide to set a password, QuickBooks requires the password for changes that would alter balances for the accounting period that you have closed. Like we said before, this includes adding, editing, or deleting transactions dated on or before the closing date. You can change the password at any time if necessary. After entering all of the information and updating the settings, click Save. Then to close the window, click Done and the company settings will be saved. How QuickBooks is built. QuickBooks is built based on lists of information and transaction forms completed by the user. Together they make up most of the information in QuickBooks. Lists in QuickBooks. Lists are the framework of, of the program. Use lists to fill out QuickBooks forms. Forms include things like invoices, sales receipts, bills, checks, etc. For example, to pay a bill, choose a name from your vendor list on the Enter Bills form. QuickBooks enters the list information on the form for you. This saves you time and prevents typing errors for the students. You can also change the information directly on the form if necessary. However, lists will be used most of the time. Although most lists are easy to set up in QuickBooks, some lists, such as the chart of accounts, products and services list, and class list, sometimes require careful planning. As part of the QuickBooks setup, the chart of accounts will be set up for the students automatically. This will be one area that will not require 
any new information. QuickBooks Transaction Forms You'll record most of the daily business transactions on a QuickBooks Transaction Form. You will use QuickBooks List to complete the transaction forms. Behind the scenes, QuickBooks records the accounting entries of the debits and credits. The invoice is an example of a transaction form. You'll learn more about how lists and transaction forms work together as you start creating transactions. Importing lists. If you have Excel files containing lists of your customers, suppliers, or products and services, they can be imported into QuickBooks to quickly incorporate your business informa information into the company file. This is helpful because entering every customer, supplier, individually can be time consuming. To import customers, click the gear icon at the top right of the screen and then click import data. As part of the QuickBooks education files, you'll notice that you can download a customer list and that customer list can be imported using this process. After clicking import data, click customers. Then click Browse and navigate to the Excel or CSV file that contains your customer data. Click Open. And then click Next in the bottom right corner of the window. This window now displays two columns. The column on the left shows data fields that can be imported into QuickBooks. The column on the right shows possible matches for that data that come from your Excel or CSV file. QuickBooks usually matches these sets of data by itself, but if needed you can click any drop-down arrow on the right column and change how QuickBooks will interpret it when importing. After reviewing the information and making the appropriate selections, click Next. In the final window, you can confirm the data that QuickBooks is importing and make any final changes. If QuickBooks encounters any errors, you will see them displayed in red. After reviewing the information and making any changes, click Import. Any list you'd like to import in QuickBooks can be imported using this same process. Setting up users. QuickBooks Online can be customized to allow multiple people to log in and enter and access information and their levels of access can also be customized based upon their role within the company. To set up a new user, click the gear icon and then click Manage Users. In this window, click New to set up a new user. The first option you must select for a user is their level of access. There are four types of access when using QuickBooks Online Plus. First, Admin. Admin users can enter any type of transaction and run any kind of report. Admins also have access to company billing information and can create other users. Regular or custom. These users can be customized so that they can perform only tasks and look at reports in relation to sales, expenses, or both of those areas. During the setup process, you can also set a regular or custom user to be able to enter their own time into QuickBooks so that their hours can be recorded for the work they perform. You can also customize their access to company account information and billing. Reports only. This user is only able to view and customize reports. They cannot enter any transactions and cannot access any company information outside of reports. Time tracking. The time tracking user can log into QuickBooks Online and enter their own time. They are only limited to timesheets in QuickBooks and will have no other access to list information or transactions. Once you've chosen the type of user you want to create and their access level, do the following. Click Next. Select the user's access rights. You can give all access to the new user. This means they can access and do any transaction or task in QuickBooks. Selecting None will eliminate their rights altogether. Selecting Limited lets you assign user rights for 
customers and sales, and or suppliers and purchases. Select the user's administration rights next. You can choose to give access for user management. This assigns rights to set up new users or edit existing ones. You can also edit the company information and manage the QuickBooks subscription and billing. Finally, enter the user's email address. Then re-enter the email address in the confirmation email field. Add a first and last name if necessary. QBO then emails them a confirmation and in that confirmation email they'll find a link that they can set up their own unique password. From that point on they can log into the company file using their own email address and password. Accountant users. On the same window you use to set up new users there is an option to create an accountant user. A company can have up to two free accountant users and these users have unlimited access to all areas of the program. Typically these would be reserved for your year-end accountant or bookkeeper. In addition to day-to-day -day transactions and reports, accountant users also have access to use special tools and features in the QuickBooks Online accountant version. When setting up an accountant user, the only required information is their email address and password. To invite the accountant, from the Manage Users page, click Invite Accountant. Enter the accountant's email address. Confirm the email. Enter the first and last name. This field is optional, but is helpful for completing the accountant setup. Click Finish to invite the accountant. Sales Tax in QuickBooks If a small business is required to track sales tax, QuickBooks can help you automate the process. This helps make sure that you keep accurate records of the tax that you collect and pay. To set up sales tax, click Taxes in the navigation bar. Click Set up sales tax. First, choose the month in the start of the current tax period field. This tells QuickBooks what tax period you're in. This information will be provided to you by the Canada Revenue Agency when you register your company for sales tax. In the education setting, this will not be required. Next, choose your filing frequency. You can choose monthly, quarterly, half-yearly, or yearly. This information will also be provided to you by the Canada Revenue Agency. For education purposes, it's recommended that you choose Annual. Next, select your reporting method. Then enter the company business number. This is a critical piece of information as it will display on your company sales forms, including invoices and sales receipt. Click Next. Finally, click Got It to complete the basic setup for sales tax. You're now ready to start tracking sales taxes on sales and expense transactions. Please note that if you're located in a province with GST, PST, or QST, you'll be required to add provincial information in addition to the federal tax setup. Please see the workbook for more information.